is your name. Help us now. You bid us, you have told us that you are more willing to give the Holy Spirit than earthly parents are the gifts to their children. That we are, after all, evil. And you are only good. So we ask, we ask for this blessing now. We pray that you would be with us, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would open our minds, that we might press into your presence. Thank you that we have the privilege of being here. May we learn of you. May we learn things that will prepare us for Jesus soon coming. May we hear Jesus' voice knocking at the door of our hearts. And may we teach us how. Help us to acknowledge our need and to let him in this morning. Each one, as I speak and each as we hear, in Jesus' name. One of the sad things about the, well, the, the change in the hymns, and I appreciate that perhaps there was some weakness in it. They wanted to bring in a new race. I understand. There is a judgment, and there is a closure of probation. Some of these things, like that, that I particularly mentioned, seem to have disappeared in the distance. And, uh, I like to see us not forget them, even if it's not there right now in the head of music. We covered a lot of ground. I uh, was complaining, telling in cheek, uh, of Brother, Brother John, Brother Chris, and Sabbath School, and Brother Lee, and, and the presentation. We covered so many great Bible verses on this topic. Is there anything else I can say? But I'm a wordy kind of fellow, so I'll probably find a way. But pray for me that God will speak and will not just be human words that we hear. The latter rain, we want to receive the latter rain. We need the Holy Spirit to realize us, to establish us in Christ, and to fill us. To remake us, to reform us, make us in I wanted to say one thing. In regard to Everybody will have a chance to hear the message. Everybody. 
will come into contact with the Holy Spirit. And they have a choice whether they let him in or not. Just as everybody is going to be baptized on fire. Everybody is going to be placed in a fire of God's presence. The question is, who's going to live in the fire? Who's going to dwell with the everlasting burnings? I think that's where the lead right now in Isaiah 33, 15 to 17. Okay. Who can dwell with everlasting burnings? Who can be in God's presence and live? Because our God is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire against sin. He consumes that which I evil. He's too holy to look upon sin. But the wicked shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. God's wonderful presence is a consuming fire to them. But they don't know it. Because they were never baptized, because they did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, their nature wasn't changed. They're of a different nature when they arrive in the fire, and they're consumed because of sin. Sin cannot exist. It cannot survive in God's presence. Whereas if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you receive the Holy Spirit, you see, you are changed. You have a different substance, a different nature now, and you live in a fire. Wherefore the righteous are shining forth as the sun in their heavenly Father's realm. Glorify. It's a new nature. It's different. There we are, we will be able to see him as he is, because we've been changed in his image, because our body body has been changed to be like unto his glorious body. And just a hint of what that glorious body, because Jesus was still in, in human flesh, would it happen? But just a hint of what that would be happened on, on that mount of transfiguration when he began to glow. Just a hint as 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 divinity flashed through humanity. There was a revelation even in the human body that we had at that point, which was in the line of humanity that we are. They began to think what it is now. Think what it is now. In Christ's glorified person in heaven now. Right? Think about that. And to see him as he is, face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face with will it be. But Lee brought to our mind. Um, that we've been told we've been told what God wants what God's will is forgive me if it's on social so it's the word you should pay attention to right? not not <laughs> so for, forgive me if the word in this form is given in the way open your Bible or listen, and listen carefully please we're in early writings. Um, 270 here. Friends, I mean, this is what we're going through right here, okay? And what we need to be in our side, okay? We are preparing, we're preparing for a great crisis to some of the disciples with. When they got to that garden of the summer, Christ was a form and Jesus had been warning them for a while, and they weren't getting it. Right? And, and God has been telling us that Christ is coming soon. He's been telling us about pouring the Holy Spirit that we need and the experience that we need. And we haven't been getting it, have we? We haven't been. We've been sleeping, as Sister pointed out. Because we haven't been in community. We haven't been focusing on Christ. We haven't been sharing the words of God with each other. Because we've been distracted with the cares of this life or the, the problems of this world. And we need an experience, as we mentioned, that we do not now have in many or too many months of team. I saw some with strong faith and agonizing cries pleading with God. Their countenances were pale and marked with deep anxiety, expressive of their eternal struggle. This is 269. Firmness and great earnestness were expressed in their countenances. Large drops of perspiration fell from their foreheads. Now and then their faces would light up with the marks of God's 
approbation. And again, the same solemn, earnest, anxious look would settle upon them. Evil angels crowded around, pressing darkness upon them to shut out Jesus from their view, that their eyes might be, excuse me, drawn to the darkness that surrounded them, and thus they be led to distrust God and murmur against Him. And this, okay, what's going on? Okay, I'm just going to skip on down here. Okay. The, of course, uh, the angels of God were wafting their wings, scattering away the darkness as Satan was also pressing. As the praying ones continued their earnest cries, at times a ray of light from Jesus came to them to encourage their hearts and light up their countenances. Listen now to this part. Some I saw did not participate in this work of agonizing and pleading. Mm -hmm. They seemed indifferent and careless. Mm -hmm. They were not resisting the darkness around them, and it shut them in like a thick cloud. The angels of God left these and went to the aid of the earnest praying ones. I saw angels of God hasten to the assistance of all who were struggling with all their power to resist the evil angels and trying to help themselves by calling upon God with perseverance. Mm -hmm. But his angels left those who made no effort to help themselves and I lost sight of them. Mm -hmm. I was asked the meaning, that's what Jake says, of the shaking I had seen. And I was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony mm -hmm. called forth by the counsel of the true witness to the lay of the sins. This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver and lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. Some will not bear the straight testimony. They will rise up against it. And this will cause a shaking among God's people. This is what's going right before us. This is really what we're going through in this time now. Okay. I want you to also move down just a little bit further though. Remember them, they come out of this and she sees this multitude, arm in arm. I heard a voice like many instruments, all sounding in perfect strain, sweet and harmonious, surpassed any music I ever heard, seeming to be full of mercy, compassion, and elevating holy joy. It thrilled my whole being. Said the angel, look ye. My attention was then turned to the company I had seen who were mightily shaken. I was shown those whom I had seen before weeping and praying in agony of spirit. The company of guardian angels around them had been doubled, and they were clothed with an armor from their head to their feet. They moved in exact order like a company of soldiers. Their countenances expressed the severe conflict through which, which they had endured the agonizing struggle they had passed through, yet their features marked with severe internal anguish, now shown with the light and glory of heaven, they had obtained the victory, and it called forth from them the deepest gratitude and holy, sacred joy. Now, I just want you to catch this up. I heard those both that are speak forth the truth. I'm skipping a paragraph. With great power, it had effect. Many had bound, some wise by their husbands, some children by their parents. The honest who had been prevented from hearing the truth now eagerly laid hold upon it. All fear of the relatives was gone, and the truth alone was exalted to them. They had been hungry and thirsty for truth. It was dearer and more precious than life. I asked what had made this great change. An angel answered, It is the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, the loud cry of the third angel. The loud cry of the third angel. I just want you to catch that thought. Okay? Brother Lee brought it to our attention yesterday in a way. Let's go let's go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah chapter 28. We discover here the terrible condition of God's people. Drunkenness, 
All the tables it says here in verse 8 are full of vomit. All have gone out of the way. All are under, and all have at least slept. Whom shall I teach doc knowledge, and whom shall I make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Uh, verse 9, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. If you want to understand the word of God, you must search it, you must compare scripture with scripture. You must let the Bible interpret itself. For with tam stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, so that those who don't want to hear it won't hear. And those who do want to hear it can know. With staring lips and other tongue, we speak to this people. But I want you to catch this people now described in verse 12. To whom he said, this is the rest. This is the refreshing. This is the rest. This is the refreshing. But what's the next thing? Yet they would not. They were unwilling. They were unwilling. What I want to say to you, and, and Brother Lee touched on it yesterday, is that this describes us. It describes the story of us. It describes the story of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. The people who would not hear are us. Us in our forefathers, yes, and us in our sinfulness today. If God wants to repair us for Jesus' coming, does He want that? Yes. He wants us to be ready for His coming. Yes. Then, if He is sending the rest, the rest, the refreshing, if He if He's sending something within that is the blessing of God in the latter rain, would it be fair for Him to tell us that that's where it's at? Wouldn't He identify it for us and say it would be unfair for Him to expect us to get it if He didn't say, "Hey, by the way, this is the message going to prepare you." This is the refreshing. I want you to have it, right? You might remember this is harking back to that great promise that Peter mentions in Acts, right? That you might be prepared so when the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Right? And if God didn't tell his people, but he tells us here in Isaiah that he would, right? Because God says that, I told you, this is the rest, and this is the refreshing, but guess what? We're not going to hear. Is that possible? Is it possible that God sent the rest and the refreshing to some of the atmosphere already? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, is it possible? Yes. Is it possible? Mm. Let me, let's, let's, let's look at something. Um, we just talked about it, a lot of crying and stuff. Let's, let's hold another book. This is from the 1888 materials, 1575. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us under Christ. She's referring to a particular topic in the discussion. Now she goes down. She's talking about um, how the moral law is particularly referred to in this particular area. Then she says, An unwillingness to yield up preconceived opinions and accept this truth lay at the foundation of a large share of the opposition about that, manifested at Minneapolis against the Lord's message. Who's message? No. The Lord's message through Brethren Wagoner and Jones. Mm -hmm. By exciting that opposition, by creating prejudice and stir over this smaller doctrinal point, mm -hmm. Satan was able to get people to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. Okay? Actually, it wasn't the that water. It was actually a point of truth. Mm -hmm. But it was a smaller point of truth. But because they were unwilling to acknowledge evidence when it was presented to them, they were too proud mm -hmm. and wouldn't look at it honestly. They were unable to receive any greater light God was really trying to say. <laughs> By exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded mm -hmm. in shutting away from our people, sending the evidence, in a great measure, the special power of the Holy Spirit that God longed to impart to them. Listen carefully now. 
The enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency which might have been theirs in carrying the truth to the world as the apostles proclaimed it after the day of Pentecost. Listen to this. The light that is to lighten the whole earth with its glory was... Can you see that there? Resisted. And by the action of our brethren has been in a great degree kept away from the world. Yeah, it happened. But let me add my own ashes and my own sins today and hinder me from receiving and experiencing the message that God wants to give to the world now. And so it's not just them, it's not just about this history. Although we can learn from the history because what caused them to go astray, what caused them to take a wrong turn and cause us to take a wrong turn. And in fact, there may be a culture of taking a wrong turn mm. ideologically mm. that builds up over time. And we need to learn to think the way the Holy Spirit wants us to think. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Now I have great sorrow of heart. I don't want to have great sorrow of heart. Now I have great sorrow of heart. I have had nearly ever since the Minneapolis meeting. This was sometime later. And I will tell you why. Because God has been speaking to me as he has done for the last 45 years. And I have presented these matters and the brethren have known or have seen the fruit and yet unbelief has come right in. Unbelief of Ellen White of the testimony that come in. Why? Because she was taking a stand that was different from their ideas. And therefore they wouldn't do so. Now it comes to the manifest movement of the Spirit of God. If the Spirit was in their hearts, listen carefully, they would recognize it in a moment. But the trouble is, the Spirit is not in them. And they never will search these things to see if they were so. Mm. The reason why I felt so in Minneapolis was that I have seen that everyone that has taken a similar position to the one they took in Minneapolis would go into the darkest unbelief. Okay? Unless they repented of this. I should think it a tear to our souls that we would dare to open to the heart the miseries of unbelief and dwell in that atmosphere such as there has been since we were in Minneapolis. Another place she says, there was, I'm going down here. Now, brethren, we want to have the simplicity of Jesus, of Christ. I know that he has a blessing for us. He had it at Minneapolis, and he had it for us at the time of the general conference here. But there was, you know, see that? There was no reception. Some, yes, some, received the light and rejoiced in it. But then there were others who stood right back, and their position was given confidence to others. To talk. See, God wanted his people to generally take over there. A few people were blessed, they accepted him. They, they, but most people did not. And the reason why is because the leadership was standing aloof from the message. In fact, and Ellen White was coming out with articles just like this in the review again and again. The result was that there developed. Uh, resistance to her. There developed such resistance that became an earnest idea that, hey, you know what? Let's send it all the way to Australia. Yes. We don't like these articles. She's criticizing us. <laughs> Send her to Australia. Of course, she didn't have any light against it, and so she humbly submitted and went. But when she got there, she got some light. When she got there, she got some light, and she wrote back and said, you know what? It was not. It was not the will of God that Sister Watt should be taken away from the center of the world. It was not the will of God that we should not astray. God allowed this to take place. That man may have his own will, which he thought was superior to the ways of God. So, let's go another place, okay? My 
while you're going there, Brother David, yeah, yeah, I was just please. thinking, um, based on that quote, that after a sermon, when you were to be a Berean, uh, it might be more important for you to go and search it out by yourself instead of uh, thinking, instead of like um, causing distrust of whatever the message might be. It lets you know clearly that it's an error. But if you are um, like, I don't, I don't know, this is the first time I'm hearing this, and you take it to the Lord in prayer as opposed to like causing distrust. Because it said that they basically, um, because they started talking about it amongst themselves, they created an atmosphere of opposition. The whole point, the whole point was that God was sending a message. And they didn't have their hearts open. There's two things the Bereans did there, right? They received the word. They didn't just write Paul off. This is the guy who persecuted Christians. They were open. They received the word with all readiness of mind. But then they also went back personally for themselves. And that was what Ellen was urging the brother in 1888 to do. She says, go to your Bible. They were listening to Elder Butler, who was sending out these letters and saying, don't listen to John Wagner. You're off the track. You know? And one of the brother got up in, in the conference and said, Elder Butler, the general conference president, is sick in Battle Creek. We mustn't have this discussion without the general conference president here. And Ellen White said, what? Are we not all Bible students? God's work, God's message, God's people don't need to wait for one man. Amen. Let us study our Bibles and discover it. Now this is in reviewing here, this is one of the articles I was talking about. And this is very, very straight, this article. Applying the Laodicean message. Okay? Just look at this. Some, several, have written me inquiring if the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message. Remember what caused that shaking? Remember, it's the third angel's message, right? And what, what the, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, it all comes together that, with this third angel's message. The message of justification by faith is the third angel's message, and I've answered it is the third angel's message. And here the prophet declares, and after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. What do we call it? That's a lot. That's a lot. Right? That's Revelation 18. That's a lot. Right? Thank you. God has light for his people, and all who will accept it will see the sinfulness of remaining in a lukewarm condition. They will heed the counsel of the true witness when he says, Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and suck with him. And he with me. We've seen in a number of texts in the passage we've seen here that God identifies what is the refreshing. Remember we looked at it yesterday? God says, here's the good way. Here are the old paths, the ways to dwell in, the path of life. And you said, we will not walk there. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. We want not thy ways, O Lord. Okay. So God has told us what is the rest, what is the refreshing. He has sent to us, He has sent to us the message of the latter rain. The message of the latter rain. By the way, look at this. It's called Return of the Latter Rain. Have you read it? It's by a man named Ron Duffy. I would encourage you to read I would encourage you to read it. Uh, it's an excellent resource, and it's going to have present a lot of these things. But I don't have time, and obviously, I'm having a hard time to up all of a sudden a little fast, and I apologize for that. But God has told us where is the rest. He has told us where is the refreshing. Let's look at another one. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 26. There is this. You 
21, 26. There's this whole description. And Moses gathers together the children of Israel. He describes them to them the story of their history and reminds them what happened. You rebelled, you murmured in your tent. Here in verse 26, he gets to the heart of it here. They were encouraged to go up, to take the land. Okay. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, you would not go up but rebel against the commandment of the Lord your God. You know these things are got the history of God's people. And type these things were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are. I'll point you here now the same thing. The history of ancient Israel is a striking illustration of the past experience of the Adventist body. God led his people in the Adventist movement, even as he led the children of Israel from Egypt. In the great disappointment, their faith was tested, as was that of the Hebrews at the Red Sea. Had they still trusted to the guiding hand that had been with them in their past experience, they would have seen the salvation of, the God, of God. If all, listen carefully to this, if all who labored unitedly in the work in 1844 had received the third angel's message, did you catch that? What is the rest of the refreshing? The loud cry? Yeah. The third angel's message in Verity. If they had received the third angel's message and proclaimed it the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord would have brought mighty with their efforts. A flood of light would have been shed upon the world. Years ago, the inhabitants of earth would have been born. The closing work completed, and Christ would have come for the redemption of his people. Did you call that? Christ would have come. It was not the will of God that Israel should wander 40 years in the wilderness. He desired to lead them directly to the land of Canaan and establish them there a holy, happy people, but they could not enter in because of unbelief. Skip down the later part of this. Unbelief separated them from God. They refused to do the work which he had appointed them. Others were raised up to proclaim the message. In mercy to the world, Jesus, did it. Jesus delays his coming. That sinners may have an opportunity to hear the warning and find it in a shelter before the wrath of God to be poured out. Under what condition could they have finished the work? If they had received and proclaimed the third angel's message, how much says that's the message of justification by faith? Mm -hmm. That's the rest. And that's the refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's in that message. I only call it a most precious message. Mm -hmm. The result of, of not accepting it. Because there was no reception, that's her word. Because there was no reception. The result is, if the 1844 people even had received it and proclaimed it, in 1888 they had a chance to receive it, and they did it. Okay? And now kind of a culture of resistance. You know? In fact, it has a name. You, a lot of people were like, oh, John's away. You, know you should never be ashamed of God's messengers. Mm -hmm. You should never be ashamed of God's messengers. Yeah, they fell away. Later on, <laughs> one of the big reasons they fell away, you know what I said? It's because of the terrible opposition, unchristlike opposition of their heart. Mm -hmm. Those are the key reasons why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in mercy for Christ and Jesus coming. We don't have time to, to finish this, but I'd like to finish this study we go you know, to later presentations after the end. But, uh, let me just give you another quote briefly, another place. I want to say, the message that Jones Brown Richard said is the message of God to the latest in church. Mm. The message of God to the latest in church. What was what caused the shaking? The straight testimony of Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Testimony of the true witness to the latest in The message Jones Brown Richard said, she says, is the message of God to the latest in church. We cannot blame God. We cannot blame God. He did tell us his word is true. I say to make true. This is these people I told them. This is the rest. This is the rest. Refreshing. But you would not hear. Let's go to Hosea chapter 5. Then short. As we close this up. I apologize for being here a bit long. 
because we wouldn't hear it, because we said we don't want your ways, oh God. Now, now is our time for you and me not to be proud and say, oh, I would have done that. For us to say, no, that's me. My unbelief, my sin, my rebellion is just not theirs. Mm-hmm. In as much as I've backslid, in as much as I've compromised, I have to believe it It's me. Mm-hmm. The legacy and message applies to me, and it applies to us as a people. And I need to repent. And we need to repent. And we need to acknowledge our offense. Because the good news for is that if we acknowledge our offense, he says he will return to us. He will bless us. And we we'll won't finish that discussion as we can study later on. Are there any questions that I'm posing? Please ask other questions. Are there any questions about? Um, can I just read a few verses that I found the table? You found the verse? Uh, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, I'll just read 10 and 11. It says, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it, the person of Christ. And then he says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the spirit of forgiveness, Paul has, you need to have the same spirit of forgiveness. Let's have the same unity of mind. The same devices divide people, get people attacking each other. And that's not what we want. What we do want is to listen to Jesus as he tells us what is our offense, what is what we have done corporately and individually. Our sin, we may repent, acknowledge our offense, and have the blessing of his presence in preparation for Jesus' coming.